The P-42 was introduced by General Electric in 1992 as Amtrak began to phase out their successful F-40 PH locomotive. The design was quite a bit different from previous passenger locomotives where the P-42 body was built from a monocoque car body shell and the exterior of the car body acted as structural pieces of the locomotive. This allowed the locomotive to be lighter, more aerodynamic, and more fuel efficient than previous Amtrak equipment. Amtrak purchased over 260 Genesis locomotives across three variants, the majority of these being the P-42 model. Atherton has produced a Genesis AMD 103 variant for quite a while, with the original model being offered in the Blue Box line as a kit. The model line was eventually upgraded to the Blue Box Ready to Roll and eventually phased into the Modern Era Ready to Roll line as well. Atherton announced the P-42 into the Genesis model line in May of 2020, and dealers received them in the second half of May 2021. The announcement includes two road names for Amtrak and Via Rail, several body styles for early and late P-42s, and overall five paint schemes, including two of the Heritage units. The Genesis model has become one of the most requested upgrades for Atherton in recent years, so we'll go ahead and check out what they have to offer in their newest Genesis product. The model we'll be taking a look at today is Amtrak Diesel No. 5, which was built in 1996, but was repainted in 2004 to the current Phase 5 paint scheme. Originally part of the larger 207 locomotive purchase, it is a good representation of the majority of P-42s on the Amtrak system and can be seen running on the rails today. Up on the head end of the unit is the tinted front windshields and etched metal windshield wipers. The Amtrak logo and printed locomotive number boards are just below the windows as well. To each of the sides of the logo are the front dual sand fill access doors. The LED light is just below the Amtrak logo with the red marker lights on either side of the headlight. The unit also features two ditch lights just below the marker lights, a total of six LED lights on the front of the locomotive. This P42 also features a rebuilt nose as seen by the rivet details surrounding the lighting features, a feature that was added to P42s in an effort to reduce repair costs if a vehicle was struck at a crossing. The front of the locomotive has four total pin connectors for MUing locomotives together. The black receptacle is used for MU cab control and the blue receptacle is used for communication between the locomotive and cars. There is a total of four head-end power or HEP receptacles that are painted red and on the prototype there is usually a cable that connects the top plug to the lower one. The locomotive also sports some more classic locomotive features, the plastic coupler cut bar, dual trainline air hoses, rubber MU airlines, and a snowplow with attached metal grab irons. Several components like the air hoses and metal grab irons have accent painting where applicable. The model is finished off with the McHenry scale plastic coupler. The conductor side of the cab is relatively plain with only a few details to be noted of. The first of these is the tinted side windows and the etched metal side mirror along the front of the window. Behind the side mirror is the molded in dynamic brake vents and the electrical equipment blower exhaust vents as well. A molded in door to the cab interior is seen with the separately applied metal grab irons and plastic ladder extending below the sill. Running along the red stripe on the lower car body is the GE builder's decal just above the detailed trucks. And finally, the last thing to mention is the road-specific air dryer with rock shields just behind the trucks. Moving down the conductor side of the locomotive, there is a good variety of separately applied and molded in details to take a look at. Right in the middle of the locomotive is the red painted fuel tank filler port and the digital fuel gauge printed on there with the fuel tank reading. Up towards the top of the locomotive is the diesel combustion exhaust louvers that are molded into the car body shell as well as the radiator intake grills that have the supports painted onto the molded louvers. The rear door with the window insert that leads to the radiator compartment is surrounded by more separately applied metal grab irons and a plastic ladder for ground access. Some of the details that can be seen on the lower portion of the locomotive are the four molded on fuel tank sight glasses for each fuel compartment, two on the conductor side and two for the engineer side. Just below the fuel gauges are the left air tank and associated air plumbing and the large electrical and battery box in front of the rear truck. On the rear of the locomotive is a lot of the same detail we've come to expect from Athern Genesis. The rear mounted LED ditch light is in the warm white color. The rear red LED markers are on both sides of the rear headlight and just above the printed locomotive number as well as the rear sand fill hatches. The rear access door is molded into the plastic car body but has a clear plastic insert to allow viewing into the locomotive internals. Below the sill is an array of various receptacles and air hoses for connecting additional locomotives or passenger cars. The four red plugs are once again the HEP power receptacles that give 480 volt AC power to the attached passenger cars, while the blue and black receptacles transfer MU control power and communication data. The rear also sports a plastic coupler cut bar, rubber MU air hoses, 
dual rubber train line air hoses, and finally the McHenry plastic scale coupler. The engineer's side of the locomotive is almost identical to the conductor's side with only a few changes across the engine. One of the more subtle differences is instead of all the dynamic electrical blower and combustion exhaust ports, the engineer's side has the intake to these pieces of equipment. The only major difference between the two sides is the air piping under the sill, which has more separately applied air piping, but instead of an air dryer, the engineer's side has the air filter that still looks very similar to the actual dryer. The top of the locomotive matches the rest of the car body sides and is relatively plain compared to its freight service counterparts. Amtrak Diesel No. 5 has road-specific PTC antenna array, separately applied plastic components painted either in a white or silver accent paint. The long hood has several molded-in lift ring details before getting to the Nathan K5LA 5 chine horn. Down a few more panels is the exhaust stack that is still looking factory fresh. And finally is the radiator fan assembly with the etched metal fan grille and silver painted fan blades that can be seen below. The car body can be removed by removing two small Phillips head screws on either side of the fuel tank below the model. The interior of the locomotive is jack packed with a network of wires running across the interior. A lightly detailed cab interior can be seen at the front of the locomotive, and the two 28mm round speakers provide the sound effects from the decoder. The actual Tsunami 2 decoder is in the middle portion, with several wires being taped down to keep the wire management semi-orderly. The Genesis motor is the standard 5-pole skew-wound motor with brass flywheels and a multi-link drivetrain to provide the tractive force to the truck gears. Now that we've had a chance to take a look at some of the details, we'll go ahead and give the tracks some power to check out the various lighting and sound features from the Tsunami 2 decoder. The model weighed in at 24.5 ounces or 693 grams, which is a good weight for this locomotive, an improvement from other P42 models available on the market. This should help with the pulling power, which was measured using a force gauge across three trials, and the average was taken from these tests. The locomotive provided 4.43 ounces of pulling power and should be able to pull 40 to 50 standard freight cars or a pretty prototypical Amtrak long distance train by a sole locomotive. During my field tests, I found that my engine could pull up to 16 superliners relatively easy and could sustain average speeds without any issues. The coupler heights were also measured during the test, and it was found that the front plastic coupler was a little low and the rear coupler was at the correct height. The front plastic coupler was a little loose in the box, and when replaced with a scale metal coupler, the coupler fit was more snug in the box and sat at the correct height. Moving on to the scoring section, the different scoring categories are shown with their respective point values. The packaging is pretty standard Genesis packaging with the generic Tsunami 2 manual and exploded parts diagram. The model came wrapped in a soft plastic liner and a hard plastic exterior shell with truck stabilizers. One of the nicer things about reviewing an Amtrak P42 is there's no shortage of pictures or videos to check out the accuracy of the model. And while the prototype was built in 1996, it was repainted in 2004. However, for this specific body configuration with the rebuilt nose, the model is most accurate for post-2018 when the prototype received the interchange noses. 
Afrin did a good job on this model, and I couldn't find any major discrepancies between this and the prototype photos. The paint of the model is very nicely done as well. The silver paint used on the car body looks great, and the paint lines are crisp and sharp. The Amtrak blue looks correct as well. The blue looks a little bit more correct under outdoor lighting, but still looks good under interior layout lighting. The details of the model is a nice upgrade over the older ready roll line with a good mixture of separately applied and molded on details that look nicely done. Even though the model is not considered part of the Genesis 2.0 line, it shares a lot of the same details seen on those models. Some of the more standout details that I really enjoyed are the rubber airline hoses on the head and rear ends of the locomotive, the separately applied metal grab irons for the access doors, and the associated brake piping under the locomotive. I do have to say I was a little disappointed to see the majority of the intake louvers were molded on and an opportunity to include etched metal louvers was definitely missed and should have been considered to this locomotive, especially when there is quite a bit less details than their standard diesel locomotive. One of the things that really blew me away when I first picked up the locomotive was the actual weight of the engine and how hefty it was. The pulling power was very nice as well and the locomotive was single-handedly able to pull 16 superliners, quite an upgrade from the older ready-to-roll models. The rest of the electronics are nicely done as well with several lighting features and LED lights. Similar to the other AF and Genesis models though, the lack of a super capacitor is disappointing as well as the lack of lighting features like the number boards and ground lighting would have been nice touches, so I'm going to take away a couple points for some of those missing features. As with any Genesis locomotive, all the wheels pick up electrical power and provide tractive force for the engine. All the wheels were engaged and have the RP25 contour which should work on all popular brands of track. For the front and the rear couplers were a McHenry scale plastic coupler and the coupler heights were low on the front but when swapped out with a metal coupler the height was correct. However at this price point the model should definitely have metal couplers so I'm going to take away two points for the plastic couplers. One of the more opinionated scoring aspects is the value section and while this release is a little bit lower than other Genesis models the price point is definitely still up there. For this category I tried to compare it to adding details to the ready to roll version to compare the values. And I don't think you could super detail a ready to roll version without spending more compared to the Genesis model. So overall, I think the Genesis version is a good value for what you're getting. I am going to take away one point for several of the features I thought should have been there, like the intake louvers, super capacitor, and LED lighting features. And to finish up the miscellaneous section, I thought this locomotive was overall a really nice purchase and has some great details and good performance. But like I mentioned before, I thought some features should have been included, so I'm going to take away one point for that. Tallying up all the points, that gives us a 93 out of 100, and when comparing that to recently reviewed models, the Genesis P42 takes second place in the highest of the recently reviewed Athern Genesis models. Overall, I thought this was a very nice looking model that also provides a good tractive force to not only look good, but perform equally as well. I originally only purchased one of these Genesis models because I originally thought it was going to be a halfway upgraded ready to roll model and that I could super detail a ready to roll model for half the cost, but I was pleasantly surprised that it was not the case. I'm definitely going to go back and purchase some of the other models that Azathan did a very fine job on this product. So if you're on the fence about this locomotive or don't think it's as good as other manufacturers, I would definitely reconsider the options and have the Genesis P42 in the running. These models did come out earlier this week, so I would try and hurry up to your local hobby store to see if they have any left, and hopefully Akron will announce another run of these P42s with more of the Heritage units, especially after the Amtrak announcement with five more commemorative paint schemes for the 50th anniversary. So that's all I got for you guys right now. Tell me what you guys think of the review and if you're going to be picking up this Genesis P42 model for yourself. But thanks for watching, comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.